Hey everyone, it's Bowen. Um, coming back to you with another one-shot adventure. Uh, this one's called Siege of the Blue Bailey, going back to the Dahlia aristocracy, only in a different color this time. Uh, you typically hear of the Dahlia aristocracy on our Murder of the Lark episode, which you haven't, if you haven't seen, um, go ahead and check it out on our content. We have it on YouTube, we have it on our Discord. Check it all out. But this one, uh, this one's more combat heavy, more intense, and. Uh, Needless to say, there was a player death of one of our veteran players here, and it shocked our community to the core. Uh, I believe everyone was hurt. There was uh, definitely some heavy emotions um, when that event had occurred, but as with most stories, they must come to an end. So it was very impactful, but uh, necessary, and I think everyone felt better for it. So this one's... Uh, this one's a little heavier, but we still had a ton of fun, and man, the dice really screwed with us. So <laughs> let me know what you think, and uh, enjoy. We are going back to the Dahlia Aristocracy, which is a, a kingdom we visited once during our Murder on the Lark uh, episode, so you guys should catch that if you can sometime. The Dahlia Aristocracy is a really interesting kingdom. It has, like, a lot of... Uh, chivalric knights in it and people who like they they care a lot for like finery and culture and cooking and stuff but like overall they are an aristocracy which means that their entire government is sort of led by a noble class and therefore peasants are typically mistreated somewhat downtrodden and they don't necessarily have a say in a lot of uh what goes on but that's just kind of how the dahlia aristocracy has formed itself over the years so you, as the Valus Corpus mercenaries, have been summoned to a siege camp within the Dahlia aristocracy. Summoned by General Franck de Bastille. General Franck has rallied together um, a decent amount of the Imperial Army's troops, though not nearly the full force, and then has also rallied nearby militia troops from the nearby settlements. And he awaits the mercenaries to arrive. And as they arrive, one by one, to the war tent, and you guys can't miss it. General Franck's tent uh, was described to you in your missives um, as this grand tent that stands above all the others, uh, where he does like his war planning. And as you guys arrive one by one, I would love it if you each took an opportunity to say your character. Give, maybe give them like a brief description of what they are, what class they are, and everything. Um, starting maybe from left to right, uh, Ilvik, if you could tell us about your character. All right. Um, cool. All right. My hello. My name is Ilvik Klemvolshaya. I am a uh, human. Uh, I am a monk. Um, Ooh, where do I find all this information? <laughs> I am Min. I am Min, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I hit things with fist and paw. I have two arms. <laughs> I have two legs and one hand. <laughs> it's really bad that's my accent. Uh, nice to meet you and make your acquaintance. Okay. Is he, uh... Thank you. Is he any particular race, or did you end up making a human monk? Um, I made him a human, but I picked, like, his thingy, but I can't find where that is, so... Fantastic. Okay. The human monk, Ilvik. Sounds like he comes from foreign lands. Um, comes to the general's tent, and behind him comes Maru, if you could describe your character. I'm gliding in with a red rope held together with what seems to be a seashell and a thick veil of white attached to a large brimmed hat. You see what appears to be a slender, a slender man with scales framing his eyes behind the veil. You look at his hands and see thick claws and a gracious smile no shoes, as Maru, the Yuntai druid, makes his way into the room, here to heal, kill, and eat his fill. Ooh. Ooh, 
movie sounds scary. <laughs> you love a good rhyme. All right. And then behind Maru comes in Yeti. Can you describe your character? So Yeti, um, quite unceremoniously, ducks under the tent's door, leaving footprints the size of elephant's feet <laughs> uh, as he enters. Um, he wears pretty much nothing except from a long, raggedy brown robe um, with some heavy pockets to uh, both sides on by his waist. Um, on his left arm, you can see through the waving of the left sleeve on his robe that um, exposed is uh, quite a, a beautiful ancient um, wooden and metal <laughs> Um, arm that resembles that of a warforged. It's quite rusty on the metal parts and has small cut off stems of plants that have grown from within. Um, in terms of actual appearance uh, in the face, uh, Yeti is a monk bugbear that after spending 20 years in a cave, his brown, uh, brown fur and beige skin has turned into a silvery white and quite a callous grey. Um, he's very socially uh, inept, but um, he loves making friends and pretty much pushes his boundaries whenever he can. A very fascinating bugbear indeed. It's a brilliant character. Um, and I apologize if it looked like I was on my phone. Stephanie messaged me. So I have duties. <laughs> I have duties as man of the house. Um, all right. <laughs> And after Yeti comes in, Ephraim. What manner of character is Ephraim? Ephraim is a stone-cold, gorgeous high elf. He has long, lustrous blonde hair and wears very fine robes underneath just uh, very ill-fitting armor. Um, looks like he has never worn armor in his life. <laughs> um, he is a soldier. Um, before this, he was the pupil of a very hallowed legendary professor at one of the uh you know one of the more uh, reputable universities in the continent and his thing is knowledge he goes out to seek knowledge and to make himself a better uh, uh researcher and he joined um Valis Corpus as like kind of on a whim as like a kind of field study. So he's here to get a taste of the real stuff. Impressive. I love it. I yeah. love it. Um, love love the new characters, guys. I feel like you guys have really put some heart into these. If you guys ever feel so inclined, don't forget that there's a character showcase thread if you guys ever want to throw your characters up there for everyone else. But not to break the immersion, as all these mercenaries come in, these fine, able individuals of very unique um backgrounds and heraldings um you guys enter the tent with a host of imperial guards eyeing you down though immediately recognizing the sigils upon you every member of the valis corpus guild has their own preferred and unique sigil upon them that represents the guild but can be worn in different ways some people have rings some people have tiaras other people have made talismans, belt buckles. So however your character would have the sigil of the guild upon them, this is an easily recognizable um, signifier of who you guys are. So therefore you are immediately let in to the general's tent. And inside lies General Franck himself, an incredibly like robust individual. He looks from first glance to be a leader of men. Broad in, broad in the shoulders and stern of back, he looks up from his war table as the mercenaries enter. And I have a Russian accent stuck on my brain instead of the French one he's supposed to have. <laughs> uh, just go back to Valheim. Go back to Valheim and give us that. <laughs> give us the bird. We'll come eventually. There he is. Come in quickly. We have only moments to lose before the siege begins. And he puts a hand out. Before his war table is actually several of these, like, um, little wooden stools. Uh, they look like they're very much meant for practical use and just easy easy to move. They're just short, round, non-backed stools, and he expects everyone to take a seat. 
Um, and he says, I have summoned you all for a very specific reason. Colette de Noir is one of our nobles. Colette has been deemed a traitor by the Dahlia aristocracy. She has denied she has denied supplies and men during wartime in foreign lands. So I have come back to bring her to justice. This is where you all come in. I do not expect you to fight the front lines. I expect you to sneak into the castle and kill Colette de Noir in order to end the siege prematurely and save hundreds of lives. Are any of you skilled in the art of assassination? He says as a general question to everyone. Mm, I may look well, good, but I'm versatile on my feet. I, I am not yeah. very versatile on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> I like to fall over into people and make it hurt. <laughs> well, if you provide me with the correct plants I need, I can make any drink or dinner turn into a disaster on their end. <laughs> Ephraim is fronting completely and says, I can shoot an apple off a tree a mile away with my bow. Impressive. It seems Valescorpus sends me their finest. Good. I would pay for nothing less. Now then, there's one matter I must ask of you. Do each of you have the stomach to hang Colette du Noir from the tower from which she hides in and raise the imperial flag? This is the only way we shall break the morale of her troops within the belly. Does this make any of you squeamish? Conksha kind of tries to hide a, <laughs> hide a face of disgust, like, oh, what did I sign up for? But also trying to keep, okay, I need money, I need money. So he, like, brings the stern face back to the front, just kind of doesn't say anything, but, like, sticks his head up as to say, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for the part. Ilvin yeah. likes the idea of putting her body on the flag itself as we mount it. Yes. Impale her. Let them see who wins in the very end. Let's become French. I'm sorry. It's tough to break those accents apart. <laughs> oh, man. It really is, dude. Can I, um, I want to just put my arm on your shoulder. Um, and like just lean over a little bit and go, I'm sure we're going to have plenty of time to get to the root of the cause. After all, you're going, he's going to be leading us inside. And I look at him and I go, correct? We, oui. that is the plan. Jean, regale them with what we have planned together. And the peasant says, we, oui, General. I shot. You see, there is a sewer catacomb, roughly a mile east of here. There is an entrance to the sewers that lead below the Blue Belly. Very few know how to find it. It is heavily guarded because it is an because the Blue Belly has, for many years, been seen as an impenetrable fortress, and this is a liability. This is the reason I know this is because I have served and my family have served in the castle for many generations. This is where we shall make entry. And then the general cuts in. Yes. This is where you shall make entry. And when you hear the battle start, that is when you shall go in. With the siege underway, all of the occupants within the belly shall be too preoccupied to pay attention to a small group of adventurers that make their way in. You may have to deal with Colette's generals upon the way. But when you get to hell, slay her, make a show of it, and break the morale of the troops within. How do we know that the sewer is not a bit guarded? Uh, to this, Jean responds. It is very hard to tell. I have not been in the sewer for a few years. 
It used to be commonplace for us peasants to go under there and maintain the sewers. However, Lady Colette has hired the help of one individual called Gasbane. Gasbane is a magic caster. He is a wizard of sorts, or at least that is all I know. And when he arrived to the Blue Bailey, he took control of the entire underground. And no one was allowed down there ever since. Every so often, unruly peasants and prisoners were sent to the sewers. And they never returned. I cannot tell you what awaits in that horrible place, except for screams and, and terrors that only I could dream about in the night. Hmm. So we have a, a building full of warriors who, who may not attack us because they're too busy at focusing on the siege, a sewer that has become a mad wizard's playpen, and a noble woman who has lost her zeal for the kingdom. <laughs> These missions are always so interesting. Well, it just, well, yeah, I wouldn't say interesting is the right word, but. I, I might say I feel a little bit entrapped by this idea. <laughs> And you guys carry on through the, the tunnels. And as you guys go, um, each of you probably feels an immediate sense of like mental relief that Jean is here because these 10 tunnels are deeply confusing. You pass by hall after hall and breakaways and forks. And by the time you've reached to a certain distance, you're all fairly confident you'd have a hard time even finding your way back out where you came from at this point. The tunnels are deep winding and um, confusing, to say the least. And as you guys start walking, you hear a noise. You hear the chittering of, like, perhaps stone, rattling against stone, or some sort of dry and rounded object rattling against rocks. As you guys look about... Each of you can notice warily in the darkness bones crawling out from underneath wreckage and debris within the sewers. And two skeletons form right in front of you as sentries to the sewer and go Rah! and start coming at you guys. You guys want to redistribute those uh, potions real quick? <laughs> I'm going straight to the front. I'm pushing everyone behind me, and I'm drawing my quarterstaff. Party takes off, bounding down these halls, running in full sprint with Sean right in the middle, directing you guys where to go. Down here! Down there! Go! Go! And you can hear the skeletons getting louder and louder as they're kind of, like, bearing down on you. And as you're running, two skeletons come out from one of the halls, like, running one direction and stopping and turning their ugly heads, going like, ha! Ah! and just charge you guys. Meanwhile, you can hear the noises still getting louder and louder as you go. So, this is a unique tactic that I've used in other sessions that I'm going to use again on you guys. Yay! <laughs> I'm proud of to be a guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew McConaughey stars in Interstellar. <laughs> Basically what happens is, as you guys are running and you turn a corner, Ephraim being in the back and technically um, Maru at the same time, you guys can vaguely see in the far silhouetted distance of this cave, this image. Uh, I can't wait to show you. Look closely, gentlemen. Oh. Oh my God. <laughs> Jeez. As a horde Ooh. of skeletons and bones arise and creep and crawl up, down, 
all around, a good distance behind you, but are slowly gaining. And if anything slows you upon your path to escape from this, some will catch up. So, two skeletons stand in your way. And you must take them out. And in D4 turns, two more shall appear. I'm going to take the first <laughs> the first act here. Could I request to do something cool? Are they in a line? So you guys are in a catacomb. The skeletons behind you look just like that picture, but they're just kind of like coming out of the side hallways, the different pillars and patterns just clogging up that hallway. And I'm going to say it's a good ways behind you. Like, you have a good bit of distance between you and them, otherwise they would catch you instantly. So I'm going to say it's something like a hundred feet behind. Enough for you to know that they're there. The, the two in front? The ones behind you. The two in front are like right there, and they're standing your guys' way. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do um, something called bowling ball. Uh, I'm going to um, spend a key point, or at least attempt to spend a key point to dash and in that acceleration, I'm going to try and effectively rugby tackle or slam into these skeletons with enough force to break them apart. Because <laughs> they are all just bones at the end of the day. Okay, okay. So. I'm aware it might be a really, really high roll, but I'm willing to take that risk. <laughs> I will allow you to bull rush as an action. It would be a strength against his strength check to just blow him out of the way, but you can only do it against one skeleton. Does That's anyone fair. else want okay. to do the same, I guess, to just push past them? You have to... Go ahead. I'll, just... I'll leave it at that. I turn around to the other monk. Do we, we're gonna... Should we... Oh. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm thinking about just smacking the other one. Honestly, just yeah. Let's. I mean, why not? Let's do it. Um. So I guess. <sighs> I don't necessarily know if I'm gonna do something quite that fancy though. More so as I'm wanting to probably. I'm just gonna kind of brace my quarter staff with both of my hands now. Go after the one that he's not going out of, and then just. <sighs> I guess literally just rush the guy, but like try to. Just really smack him in the face as soon as I get up to him. Just give him a nice clock on the cheek and hopefully just take that head off of those shoulders. If I can. But okay. obviously just hit him in the face is really the big thing that I'd like to do. Okay. I will make a clarification. If you intend to attack him, that will be what you yeah. do. Okay. What Yeti is doing is instead of attacking, he's doing what I call a bull rush charge. So he's going to take his full movement up to the target, do a strength check to completely blow him off his feet out of the way and keep moving. Okay, gotcha. So, so you can stop to strike I, him hmm. or you can do what Yeti's doing where you're just blowing past these guys and going. Is it okay to ask other people what their like strength is already and stuff like that? Like what's your like is that okay to ask? Do I am I able to know what you're what you're capable of doing as opposed to what I'm capable of doing? I would say you'd have to make a decision quickly, and no more deliberation. Uh, I mean, I guess let's do it. Let's just let's just bull rush then. Can I give them advantage by using frostbite on the ground, all directly behind the skeletons, like at the skeleton's feet, so it's slippery? Okay. You could potentially end up tripping them in the, in the process, as they're going to have to mm. tread the same ground as they're going through them. But you can do that. I mean, I would rather they slide, so... I mean... <laughs> okay. okay, then can I hold Frostbite to... Can I hold Frostbite to see to, to spell, spell the one that doesn't get knocked down? If one doesn't get knocked down, I want a Frostbite going for its face. All right do it all right yeah and then after i want to do the same with um my longbow if anything if, if they don't if one of them doesn't go down i'm gonna take a shot at it all right so uh roll to hit um ephraim and maru real quick and then we'll do our strength checks to see if you guys plow through them okay mine's uh, um 
a, a save on their part. They got to beat a 13 constitution save. All right. Fails miserably. Negative one. <laughs> miserable. Oh, God. All right. So I'm assuming you guys are, are you hitting the same target? Uh, I think we're going after one target per. I mean, I mean, Mario and guy. Ephraim, sorry, sorry. Oh, I should have oh, clarified. Yeah, we, we saved our action to hit one that doesn't get knocked down. So I guess if if they don't, if one of them does, doesn't does fall, that's the one that gets hit. That's what we saved our action for, to do. Or, or if both of them don't fall, we'll hit them separately. You're going to have to be possible? narrow it down. Okay. Okay, I'll aim for the one that gets hit. I'm aiming for what Eddie is tackling. All right, and what's Ephraim okay. aiming at? Um, the other one. Got it. All right, so that's going to be a hit. You're going to be a hit. And go ahead and... I guess we can roll damage afterwards. Let's see what these strength checks do. So, Yeti and Ilvik creating this jolly wall as they charge forward. Roll your strength. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Skeleton strength is not particularly high. We'll see how they roll. They don't even actually have a modifier, so. Yetis withstands oh. the attack. Come on! Ilvik actually succeeds! <laughs> you can go away with What that. the fuck, roll 20? What the fuck? Oh, fate it's is my fault. It's my fault. I froze him. I froze him standing. That's what happened. <laughs> You, you, I froze him standing up, and you hit him, and the ice cup him right there. Reinforced the skeleton. <laughs> All I right, still then. have my bonus action. And go ahead and do damage. I think Ephraim, right? Because you definitely hit the other skeleton that did get knocked out. <laughs> okay. Oh, right. I love that this is working out for me. All yes, right. you arrogant <laughs> guy. Let's <laughs> look. <laughs> I am in great uh, I'm getting pain. attached to this character now, and now I wanted to live. I'm sure, like, your shoulders slunk at that low roll, and then you succeeded, and it's like, oh, Dude, shit. I was devastated on that six. <laughs> so it's just like, well, that's it. Got him. You did it. Come on, Yeti, Boom. do better. I've seen you wrestle a bear. I apologize. to take some names. <laughs> All right. I so. really apologize for the party. All right. I have faith in Yeti to to kill this thing and keep us moving. All right, Yeti. <sighs> Pulling out all the stocks. I must spend my final key point to do flurry of blows again. And with that, I'm going to start off with um, bonus action: two unarmed strikes. It's going to be a right hook and an uppercut, and as an action, twin staff just across the skull. All right. All I'm right. gonna I'm gonna make all those rolls if that's all right. Yeah, man. Send it. Send those attacks right down the line. Yeah. And, and bam. Both hit. All the hits. All the hits. Oh. Ephraim, what do you do? Is this one? This is the one um, Yeti attacked, right? Yeah. That's the one he's going okay. for, yep. Okay. Um, can I just take it? Can I um, walk, uh, run past it without incurring uh, an attack of opportunity? Yes. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll, I'll just run up ahead and join the others. All right. Are you leaving Jean behind? <laughs> oh fuck! Uh, <laughs> he's, he's a smart cookie. He can he can he can follow, right? He's gonna run behind you. I hit him with the bow. Do He's going, something. John's going where you're going. He's like, <laughs> he's going back. You elbow him in the face. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'll. I, I didn't. I didn't dash. So can I run forward then just take a pot shot, turn back? Ah, you can. So you'll okay. Skirt around yeah. them. I would say in real time you can definitely do that. Get around the skeleton as it's engaged with Yeti in this Mortal Kombat, and like, as they're taking blows, you're like, Oops, all sorry. epic and stuff, and taking off. All right, go ahead, damage yeah. everyone. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> That's all 
doubled. <laughs> so yeah. 34 in total. All hits. All right. This poor skeleton's only going to get one hit back at Yeti before he goes down. Oh! Oh my god! Oh! oh! Right at the cusp of the escape. Please. Please, 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 please. The DM lands a crit. Eleven! <laughs> Is that all you got? I'm dead. Do you have <laughs> a destiny no, no, card? I can use my reaction to use healing word. I can use my bonus. I can do a healing word, can I? If it is a reaction and or bonus action, I will allow it. It is, it is a bonus action. So, well, I see... Actually, I can't allow it. I'm sorry. He's dead from the blow. You can't, like, heal him before he gets hit to give him, like, temporary hit points. Like, that blow just... Just... No! Ugh. No! What is his hit points? No, Yeti! Are you at zero? Minus one. Oh. <laughs> Yeti has fallen. GG. You have no Wait, destiny points. No he, no, he hasn't. You want to know how I know he hasn't? Because I still have my destiny point. I still have my destiny point. Reroll that. <laughs> Come back in the middle. They're for oh, your no. rolls. They're for your He's rolls. <laughs> Oh, it hurts. Do I still have mine, or did I use it to get my arm? You used it to get your arm. But, but, I know Stephanie did argue at the end of that session to give you a destiny point because you all roleplayed so well on the rat catchers. I think you have a destiny point left. Are we, did you spend a destiny point any time before that? <laughs> Can I give to mine? This is not how destiny points work. It's the hard. I've, I've spent, I spent one destiny point in the murder of the lock. I didn't spend a destiny point in, the um in the golden rat catches. I don't believe you did. I don't believe you did. Because the then I would have gotten my arm back. <laughs> but the destiny point you did gain for the role play, you decided to. To meta game a little bit and. Go with me on it to get you your limbs back. You have no destiny points. I have no destiny points, guys. It's all right. I get it. So Yeti crushes this skeleton's skull in a vicious rage. And as you guys are all moving ahead, you notice he doesn't follow. As the skeleton falls before him, he turns to everyone, lurched forward, the short sword of the skeleton embedded deep into his guts. Yeti! <laughs> Yeti, do you have any final words? As they all turn with only a second glance before they have to run. I, I never planned for this! Hold on! I gotta turn off the video, hold on! What the fuck? What did I do now? Yeti, what the fuck, man? <laughs> Uh, okay, I put my hand on Maru. <laughs> hand out as I'm running away. You gave me the gift of speech. And now I give you the gift of life. <laughs> as I kind of just release my hand and fall to the floor. Wow. I, I just, I'm still running, like, I'm bawling. I'm bawling. I'm staying for the rest of the one shot in the call. I hope you guys know that. <laughs> I'm not going to leave. Now I'm going to be the me. ghost of Yeti, just like, what the fuck, guys, don't do that, like, kind of thing. <laughs> oh, no. I'm comfortable it saying good. that the DC was probably going to be, like, a 15. So, okay. you guys passed with ease. However, Maru, I'm going to have you roll me a d6 minus one to determine how high you were before falling. Before your oh, muscles man. give out. 
Okay, a d6 plus one? Minus a one. D6. Essentially, every point on this die counts as 10 feet. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> fell before you even made it past the vine. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I was like, oh. And, uh, I, oh god, I forget what falling damage is, because it's only 10 feet, so it's like... Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't very far. Let me see, I think I can just look it up. Uh, it feels like, like a breeze. Let's see, the environment and falling. Um, Unless at the end of like a fall, Skyrim creature falling. takes 1d6 bludgeoning damage for every 10 feet that they fell. So you only take a d6, and I will roll it. Six. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing there? That's, How you doing there, bud? I rolled it because that is fate and the environment attacking you. <laughs> Three hit points left. Noted. Three. Everybody's loving the threes today, actually. Seems everybody. Ephraim's your turn next. <laughs> All right. Let's hope that doesn't happen, but. <laughs> you guys get to the top. All right. And whenever you reach the balcony and get over, because you have no time to look back. Correct. No time to stop. You know, it's, you've only got so much muscle energy that if you slow yourself, you will fatigue and not make it. You keep going. Right. Regardless right. what you hear. Get to the top, get on the balcony, and like a set of like heavy wooden doors lies before you and a few windows. However, luckily enough, you were able to position yourselves at the door. So to the best of your knowledge, whoever is inside most likely hasn't noticed you yet. You look back down and see the scrambling Maru trying to <laughs> get up from the ground. <laughs> and he's in pain. He's in serious pain. Can I and you just got your feet against the wall. Much easier climb. It's going all oh, the way down that's to like... Easy, right? It's no longer 15. It's going all the way down to 10. So you just gain a 25% better chance of scaling this wall. With your you failed us. Like... Nat one. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Destiny point? <laughs> no, what happens? Tell me. I... Oh my god. I can't have you retcon it. It's meant to re-roll a roll. If I tell you everything that happens and then you decide, it wouldn't make sense. That'd be too meta. Yeah, that's too meta. No, just tell me I'm done. Let me know. Let me. Wait, 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 wait. No, because I couldn't know. Because I was gonna say, can I use primal savagery to stick my nails into the the wall? But nope, it's over. What happens? Do it. Does the rope break? Okay. So you've already taken some serious damage from the first fall. You've already lost an enormous amount of muscular energy. You've got 50 feet to scale. Even with the rope giving you good purchase and grip. You're just too tired at this point. And you fall. D6 minus one again. I am on the... Oh, man. So that was four, I believe, right? Or did you do the most? So four, 40 feet. You get pretty close. They can see you. You're only 10 feet away. And they're like, come on. And you're like, ah! Ah! nine damage. Wow! Oh my. Look at oh all my. those ones. Oh man! Was that? Jeez. Are you That's at GG. zero? I am at zero. You're unconscious. You're not dead. Oh, come oh, on. Oh, my God. Okay. 